My name's Pete Spriggs. I'm the National Park Authority's Climate Change Coordinator, and that's a job which is involving supporting projects which are either reducing carbon within a national park, also trying to help national park and the organisations in there to better adapt to the changes we're expected in the climate, which is um, a trend towards warmer, drier summers, uh, warmer, wetter winters, and also the more extreme weather events like we've uh, experienced more recently in terms of very intense rainfall. The National Park Authority is keen to try and look to find ways it can reduce its carbon footprint, and we were lucky enough to work with Carbon Trust for a few months to develop a carbon management plan, and this plan laid out all the different things we could do to reduce our carbon footprint. As an authority across all our different buildings, we've got about a 1,000 tonnes of carbon that we're emitting each year, uh, and this biomass um, boiler project will take about 5% off that total on an annual basis, so that's about 48, 50 tonnes. Biomass is a great low carbon renewable fuel. It's renewable because you can plant a tree where the one that you chopped down for the uh, biomass is, uh, you know, once was. When you're thinking about carbon um, savings, that you're actually looking to reduce your carbon footprint first, so it's not just about putting in a renewable heat source. Uh, so at Alden House we've done a range of things to reduce our energy use and things like energy efficient lighting, a lot of LED rollout in our meeting area, and also improving insulation in the cavities and in the roof space within the building. So we're actually losing less heat and the building's working, working more efficiently. You've got a range of different renewable energy types you could consider, but in terms of the site, this was definitely the best one for, for the building we've got. The site isn't suitable for a wind turbine. The size of the turbine that you would need would be uh, out, out keeping in terms of our surrounding landscape. And also you'd get a lot of turbulence because we're in a built up area, we've got a lot of trees and wind turbines don't work so well close to, to buildings and, and, and other trees. In terms of solar, you know, you've got solar electric or solar thermal, but both of those were considered, but the size of the solar array you'd need to meet our energy requirements are uh, would just be too big for the site that we've got. The heat that we need to heat the building uh, can't really be delivered effectively by those um, types of systems for the scale that we need. Another source of renewable heat that you could consider and which we did but had to discount is ground source and that's where you lay a range of uh, coils under about a few feet down into the ground and it takes the heat that's within the ground and sort of squashes that heat and, and puts it into the heating system and you're taking a sort of uh, the heat from within the ground on site and, and using that in the building. Unfortunately the area of, of of ground that you'd need for a ground source heating system to heat our, our building was just beyond the, the space that we've got outside even with the grounds that we have and also the heating system that we've got currently uh, works at a much higher temperature than ground source works at best so the suitability of that technology wasn't really well fitted to the, to the heating system we've got. Biomass is a, a great option in terms of renewable uh, energy source because as we all know you plant a tree it grows you cut it down you plant another one, it can carry on and on and on um, it's not completely without its impact because obviously when you cut down a tree you don't have to transport it somewhere, you have to turn it into a pellet, you then have to drive that pellet to the fuel store that it needs to be delivered in. So there are some carbon emissions that are associated with, with um, biomass but we recognise it's a significant carbon saving in comparison to gas or oil um, because they're fossil fuels that are locked down below the, the ground and uh, you expect to see about an 80% reduction in your carbon footprint from the fuel if you take uh, the journey down biomass as we have.